You are now listening to Season 3 of The BMX Show. Greetings and salutations and welcome to another episode of the VMX Show. This is Season 3, Episode 2. little better late than never. Uh, last week, there's a lot of stuff going on here and I was too tired to uh, do a VMX Show due to all the things that are happening. Uh, part of it is uh, my dad is in the hospital. He's okay, so you really don't have to worry about that. He was having surgery and uh, you know he had pneumonia and all sorts of different things, but... Um, you know, no worries about that. He's going to be coming home soon. But also at the same time, my sister was having a baby. So, uh, you know, there was just a lot going on here. And jumping from hospital to hospital because they're in two separate hospitals. And uh, so that's what was going on last week, why there was no show. But there is a show this week, and it is going to be awesome. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. We got some video game news. Uh, Armageddon time. My friend Jesse came by last week to do a segment for the show and that's going to be coming up pretty soon but first we're going to get to your questions and comments actually before we even get to your questions and comments uh... two things one is to let you know what that song was that we opened the show with always open the show with a song from a video game 
And that was from Metroid Prime, the Fandrana Drifts song, the first Fandrana Drifts. There's sort of two songs. There's that one, which is the sort of quiet uh, piano ballad type of song. And then um, later on, it shifts to a kind of techno-ish song. And I like them both, but I figured I'd play the more mellow one. Maybe I'll play the second one someday. Another thing that I wanted to talk about, um, a lot of people have been asking me about Season 1 and 2. Now that I can put them up on YouTube, will I put them up on YouTube? And I just may do that. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I may not, but I, I really, I kind of want to put them up so that they'll be available. Whether or not they'll be YouTube videos or downloads is still kind of up in the air. Um, Was Darius, uh, thanks to him, he provided me with season uh, one, and I think season two as well. Actually, it's I think he just gave me season one. That was the one that I was missing. I, I don't know. I forget. But. Um, one of his files was corrupted, and he does not have a copy of it that works. So if anyone out there has a copy of the VMX show Season 1, Episode 11, please let me know. Um, and if you could provide me with that, that would be uh, really, really great. Because I would love to put these up on YouTube or something. Uh, there's just one or two that I'm kind of wary about putting up on YouTube. Um because of certain songs that I played, but um, we'll see what happens, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, let you know what happens with that. But if anyone out there has the 11th episode of Season 1, please let me know. Send me a private message, and if you can get that to me, that would be great. Okay, so let's get to the questions and comments from, uh, I want to say last week's, but last episode's season premiere. Uh, first, I have a, let's see, let me handle the private messages first. Here we have one from Peyote, at least I hope I'm saying that right. He says, to NecroVMX, sorry for bothering you like this, but instead of that question which I did find the video to, interesting story by the way, what? I, I forget what he's talking about. But I was wondering if you've read the series A Song of Fire and Ice, and if so, did you like it, and are you looking forward to the next book? Thank you for taking the time to read this message. Have a great day, NecroVMX. I have not read A Song of Fire and Ice, but I'm well aware of it. As a matter of fact, my parents are both very big fans of this series, and they've tried to get me into it. And one day I picked up one of the books. I'm really not sure. I think it was a Game of Thrones, which is the first one, I believe. And I picked it up, and I kind of just said, well, let me see what this is like. And I kind of opened it up to a random page and started reading. And it was some, like, really graphic sex scene. And I was like, okay, well, that's a little weird. That's not where you'd want to start. So I flipped around and went to a different passage, and I was reading it. And I, the writing style just really got to me. I did not like it at all. I, I mean, it's probably a good story, but the guy who's writing it just needs to take, like, a writing class or something. Well, I mean, he doesn't because it's successful and there's going to be a big series and I believe Showtime and everything. So it's not like I really have any advice for him. He's doing what he's doing and he's successful at it. But I didn't care for what I read and uh, really don't have that much interest in A Song of Fire and Ice. I am a, a reader of some fantasy uh, stuff, um, but really that one didn't jump out at me. So that's uh, my answer to that question. I got another private message. This is from Vidya Games. Oh, this is a long one. i got to expand it. I love when they send me long ones, and I'm not being sarcastic at all. I love, love getting nice, long comments. Though I do have to kind of rush through everything in this episode, because with our Megidian time coming on, and all the stuff I want to talk about, I don't want to run out of time, you know? So that's, that's a concern for me as well. Uh, last week I kind of went over. I wanted to be an hour. Here it is. This is from Video Games. I know you have both a PSP and a DS. That's true, I do. And I'm sure you enjoy both, and that is also true. I do enjoy both. They both have their fair share of great games, and I'm sure you appreciate the Castlevania ones. Of course, my favorite series. With the announcement of the PSP2, or NGP, as it has been codenamed, have you taken any interest in it? Personally, I think there are a few bad decisions they've made with it. The touchscreen seems kind of unnecessary, and the sheer graphical power, as well as the power of the device, seems to have in general, with all the things it's capable of, like GPS, 3G internet connection, etc., I uh, just want to cut him off there and comment on that. I do think that the PSP2 is a little bit overpowered. And, uh, I mean, I know what you say, Necro, why why is it overpowered? Why is it bad for a console or a handheld or whatever to be too powerful, as you say? And really, my concern is price. The the 3DS, we are all worried that it was going to be 300 bucks, And we're all relieved that it's going to be 250 bucks. 
How much can the PSP or uh, 2 or the NGP or whatever the hell it's going to be called, how much could it possibly be? As Penny Arcade stated, Tycho uh, made a joke saying, I'd be surprised if it clocks in under $20 million. It has a, what did he say? It has a, a touchscreen on the back. That shit don't cost a dollar. So I'm kind of concerned about the price of it. Um, I'm excited to play it, and I'm certainly excited to see if there's going to be a Castlevania game for it. But I am a little, you know, I didn't get the PSP right away. I got it several years later when um, it was at a good price. As a matter of fact, I got the PSP 3000 model, and I got this when the PSP Go had come out, so it was at a good price. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'd get that right away. I'll probably want to get the 3DS as soon as I can. But you know, money's tight. The economy sucks, and uh, you know, really don't know what's going to happen with that. And I want to see what the games are going to be like. So back to his question. Let's see. Where was I? I think it's possible that Sony could have rushed this to try and somewhat keep up with Nintendo. Sony usually puts out quality products, but I know some of the earlier PS3s had some problems with the YLOD. Of course, he's referring to the yellow LED of death, as well as the general stupidity of the amount of models they came out with and the variation of each model's features, which can become extremely confusing. Um, This is me talking here. I want to add that that's extremely confusing, especially to people who want to buy uh, PlayStation 3, and they go to a store like, say, GameStop, and they ask um, the people their questions, and the people there tell them the wrong thing, either because they're misinformed or they can't be bothered to know the truth, or they're just also confused because it is confusing. I've seen, um, I've been in GameStop where uh, customers asked one of their reps if, you know, what models of the PS3 can play PS2 games. And they've just been given bad information. So, you know, and that could that could lead to problems. Let's see, where was I? I won't even get into how stupid I think the PSP phone is. Well, that's a separate thing. I'm not interested in that. But I just want to know if you're interested in the PSP2 or NGP or FGL4 6.0 or whatever the fuck, since you seem to be happy with your PSP. Loving the new season, don't think I'm going to fail math. Well, I hope you don't fail math. I don't know where that came, came from, really. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'm interested, but, you know, I'm not about to rush out and grab it. I want to know what the price is. I want to know what the games are going to be like. So I'm, I'm a little wary of it. I'm not going to just rush out and, oh, yes, i got to have the PSP3. But then again, I never really buy a console right when it comes out. So, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, I, I always, I always kind of hang back and see what's going on. Now I want to get to the comments that were left on the actual video, and I gotta say, I hate to pat myself on the back too much, but this was a great idea to put it on YouTube. Uh, people, there were a lot of comments. Some of them weren't really questions for the show, but I'll try and read uh, what we got here. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> this video game saying, "Fuck yeah!" Guess what I'm doing in math class tomorrow, and that's why he said that because I told him if you fail, it's because because of me. It's your own fault. I responded to him there. Um, a couple of people just saying, you know, that they like the show, great show, first time listening to something like this. Um, Fizzling Vet commented on DJ Hero 2, saying, good to hear DJ Hero is going to have a run on the 3DS. Hope it turns out better than that ass flop, DJ Hero 2. I haven't played the DJ Hero games. This is really not my style of music, although I heard the gameplay is nice, but I didn't know 2 was bad. Uh, 1 seemed to get universal praise, so it's kind of interesting to hear a fan that was a, a fan of the series but didn't like the second game. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What do we got here? JDM Kid 89 says, I got a question for you to answer next vid or whenever, not complaining. But what makes you want to do all this for your subscribers? You do a little bit of everything, you know, walkthroughs, vlogs, talk for like an hour informing us on games, and you know what makes you what makes you want to do this? like it though thanks for the entertainment it's a hobby it's just something i enjoy doing you know it keeps me busy it keeps my creative wells flowing and i enjoy it it's not really for you guys i mean i do a lot of stuff that is for you guys but it's it's also for me in a way uh monk 237 commenting on uh maximo i was looking for the second maximo game still haven't found it he says that maximo game should be cheap if you can find it you got a lot of balls to take on the ghosts and goblins nick or i'm looking forward to seeing you kick some ass in those uh, if you're looking forward to me seeing kick, kicking ass at Ghosts and Goblins, you might be disappointed. Uh, like everybody else, I suck at those games, but they are a lot of fun. Uh, Deluxe Dookie says, I want to see more Dissidia. Uh, okay, I'm, you know, 
I'm sorry if some of these don't exactly make sense. I, I'm i reading them as they're written. This is what he said. I want to see more Dissidia add more Final Fantasy XI characters. There's a lot of good ones. All they had was Shinoto. Well, the problem with that is that, you know, people, you know, it's, it, it's a character creation thing. And it's tough to put characters from an MMO in a fighting game like that. Because they can, they, they're either going to be like the bad guys or NPCs, or they're going to be generic. So let's see. Uh, Peyote also commented here. I can't wait for Skyrim. Therefore, I can't wait for next week or next show. I'm still looking forward to the other Elder Scrolls game. I only played Oblivion. However, you should play Morrowind, dude. It was better. Uh, great show. I'm looking forward to next week's show. Um, yeah, I was going to talk on depth with Skyrim, but actually wound up talking uh, talking about that with Armageddon time, so the interview will be where we talk about Skyrim. Lubus Gaming Lab says, what do you think of the Dark Knight Rises casting and the new Spider-Man reboot? Well, the Dark Knight Rises casting, I'm very happy with. I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around Tom Hardy as Bane, but I'm sure, you know, I have, I have some faith in uh, Christopher Nolan's ability to put out a good movie since he's done it twice in a row. The Spider-Man reboot, I gotta say, you know, I, I kind of don't care, but at the same time, I'm kind of intrigued. Like, I don't see the point of doing a reboot. I don't know why they just didn't do Spider-Man 4. They were going to do Spider-Man 4, the director pulled out, so why didn't they just get a different director to do it? What, because they all the directors were like, no, I want to do, you know, an origin story. Well, we've already seen that. Do we need to see it again? I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the Spider-Man movies, especially the uh, the second one, but... You know, they got this British guy playing Spider-Man. I don't know how it's going to work. And, and he's like, he, what is he, almost 30? And he's in, and they're trying to say that Spider-Man is 16 in this movie. So, I don't know. Uh, WWE Lover 100 says, Have you seen the Mortal Kombat 9 trailer? If you have, what do you think? I'm actually going to be talking about Mortal Kombat a bit later on the show. Very excited about it. Um, definitely going to be picking that one up to answer your question there. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this is about. Mario Hockey 09 says a third NHL game would be Beast LOL. Okay. Uh, Jupe Reindeer says, suspected the time deal had to do with account history and cleanliness, talking, of course, about the uh, lack of time limits on my account, which is both cool and a conflict with a small project I had in mind, and I really appreciate that you're still making the MP3 option available a bit easier for me to listen in on during a long drive over the car radio, as for the stationary image looks great. Well, thank you, Jupe Reindeer. Uh, he, he actually, uh, he commented further, he says, Ugh, games to play at urinals, whizzing at Sonic, ugh, Japan. Just because it might be possible doesn't make it right, and I thought the Spank Arcade Machine was bad. I think he's talking about Boonga Boonga. And I've been uh, around long enough to see when Soda Pop vending machines tried to install mini video games in America. I've never actually seen that. That's kind of interesting. 3DS, wow, just wow. Nintendo will never die with such a tidal strike like this. My paychecks will be suffering over this, as will my available hours. And he comments on Pilot Wings also. He says, even back in the days of the Nintendo 64, most games were going for major groups and Pilot Wings kept old school with a tiny staff. I wish YouTube didn't have such tiny comment spaces. Oh, well. I guess it keeps retarded posts like First to Infinity from taking up a whole screen. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Uh, Dave Cornface says, Me, baby, me. LOL. Nice, tenacious D reference. I use that all the time. So do I. I use it a lot. Uh, this was the first time I watched the VMX show, and it's great, man. Anything that I'm willing to listen to for over an hour, I must like. This must have taken a while to upload. The font is pretty cool. Reminds me of the Batman animated series. I think it may be the same font, actually. I think the 3DS is going to be awesome. I can't wait for 3D Ocarina of Time. I've heard that it gives more depth rather than popping out at you. Skyrim is going to be amazing. Can't wait to hear you talk about it. Uh, Midnight Spectre says, Nice to see the show back. Always enjoyed it since the beginning, even though I think I missed a few Season 2 toward the end. Good episode. Liking the new format on YouTube makes it easier to watch. Anyway, cool episode. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Midnight Spectre. And I enjoy sleeping. Says, so speaking of Dragon Quest, I recently heard the sixth game's coming out February 11th or something like that. Bet you're happy about that. Uh, actually, I'm a little unhappy about that, and I'll get to that in just a second as to why I'm a little unhappy with that. Um, and finally, Dahud Rida. Uh, what a username on that. Oh my god. Dahud Rida. Okay, man. He asks, what were the graphic glitches in Lufia 2 that weren't fixed? I actually answered him. But, in case anyone else was wondering, I'll say it here. The 99th level of the Ancient Dungeon and one of the shrines are completely glitched out. There's also a few item names that are really fucked over. So, that's why I'm playing the PAL or European version of Lufia 2 when that comes out.
uh, in March, at the end of February. So I'm well into the Comic Thon. At the end of that, uh, March will be coming, and we'll be doing Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals. And I'm confused as to whether it's Sinistrals or Sinistrals. I'm having a hard time saying Sinistrals, playing the uh, the DS version of it. And they say Sinistrals. Also, the, there's a character, G-A-D-E-S. That's how you spell his name. I always said Gades, but in the DS version they say Goddess which is kind of weird to me, but we'll see how it works. You know, it, it's going to be weird for me to say it differently. So anyway, before we get to the news, and I, and I will talk about, I promise, I will talk about that Dragon Quest VI thing, but uh, why I'm a little aggravated to the release date of Dragon Quest VI for DS. But let's, uh, let's get Jesse on the show. We had, a great con- uh, we had a great conversation, had a lot of fun. Um, Keep in mind, this is from like a week and a half ago, so you know who knows what we said might have been a little bit out of date or whatever. But you know, there you have it. So we're gonna we're gonna welcome Armageddon time to the show where we talk about Skyrim and other games, and uh, we're gonna just roll that intro music. Coming at ya from Oblivion. Jesse, back to the show for the millionth time. How you doing, Jesse? Not that bad. Can't complain. <sighs> and for those of you not in the know, Jesse is Armageddon Time on YouTube, and also the latest inductee into my close personal uh, circle of friends, the Circle of Jerks. Yes. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not that much of a jerk. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> we, we, you're you're a trainee. We'll make you into a bigger jerk. Excellent. As After I rub few, my hands together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. After a few years of hanging out with the likes of me and Joey and Di, you're, you're going to be just like a raging asshole. Great! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah, because see, like, okay. right, right now I'm like, yeah, yeah, me too, guys. But then, you know, later on, I'm going to be all up in that. You're going to be like, fuck you all. All right, well, anyway. Anyway. The, fir- the first time you came on the show was to discuss... Uh, your life as a gamer who is also blind. Yes. And your second time on the show was to discuss how getting a new eyeball, or two of them, could affect <laughs> playing video games. So, Which let me has ask great. you... Well, I already know the answer to this, but for everybody else out there, let me hear, what have you done since then? Since you've gotten new eyes and you can actually see effectively now, how many games have you played? What have you uh, experienced? Oh boy, I, I have played a considerable amount of games. Like, granted, you know, I do other things with my life, but as for the gaming world itself... Liar. Yeah, yeah. Come on, I'm trying to sound credible here. Give me... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I've seen your videos. <laughs> sure. Um, I notice a lot of uh, the games that I played beforehand, I just, I realized how much easier they are now. Well, you like, know, being like, able like to like see is an them. important thing. Yeah, and like looking at menus, like I noticed um, uh, p- playing like uh, Final Fantasy games, uh, I could see the I could see the menus from way back. Like I could be on my computer here, turn around with my uh, uh, with my PS3 controller, 
and play from like the other side of the room and read the menus. So I don't have to go be like, hold on a sec. Then I scroll back, do something with the menus, come all yeah. the way back here. So, yeah, so it, you've, uh, you've been playing through Final Fantasy VII now. Yes. Keep in mind, people, for the first time all the way through, and I've owned, I've owned this game probably since 99 or 2000. Now you, ha- now you haven't beat it yet. Tell me how uh, far you've gotten so far. Um, I can't remember the name of the t- town, but it's just after the first time you go to Junon. Okay, all right. Okay, so you're kind of coming up uh, towards the area where the Golden Saucer is. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm. Be- I'm between Junon and Golden Saucer. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You got to go through that whole mountain pass area. Yeah, yeah. Fight, fight the Turks. You know. Now, what are what are your thoughts on Final Fantasy VII? This was a game that when it came out. Everybody kind of abused their penises to it. Uh, oh, huge pe- draw. People huge still draw. do. Yeah, huge draw though was the graphics, the the pre rendered, um, the pre rendered stuff, the full motion video, the cinematics. I, I, of course, now we're looking at it at a time when everything's so much more advanced, and Final Fantasy VII looks very dated. But how does it feel to see it properly? I gotta say, even though it is very dated, I put myself in that time, and I have to say they're very impressive. Like, Drugs like the, helps with that. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, you're going back in time, man. Sounds like you're working for your car, man. <laughs> Dave's not here, man. <laughs> um, but uh, one one pet peeve I gotta say is um, like I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy VI, but uh, it seems all the hype for best villain ever is Sephiroth. But I don't agree with that. Well, I, I mean just the hype. Like, oh, I love Sephiroth yeah. so much. He's so cool. <laughs> but well, I all, think I, that, all that... I've noticed, all I've noticed so far is he's just like this blubbering ninny with mommy issues. Like, yeah, he's he's got a big sword and stuff. Yeah, well, he does have he does have some serious Oedipal issues there. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as a matter of fact, uh, I believe Sephiroth was based off of Oedipus himself. So. You know, there you have it there. Um, I don't know. I mean, he's a cool character. It's sort of a, you know, like guys want to be him and women just want him sort of thing. I, I, I did like the buildup that they had. Like, you don't really see him and you kind of only hear yeah, about him. That's so true. They did there, that there, is, there is a lore that comes around him. And then when you finally meet him, you know, like you, there's backstory and stuff like that. And it, it's it, fine. He's not that evil is the thing that always struck me. No. He's just, he's a little, I mean, could compare him to someone like Kefka. A, yes, whereas Kefka is batshit insane. Yeah, or or any of the other villains, really. I think that was the, the turning point where the villains became more sympathetic. You couldn't really sympathize with Kefka. Yeah, it's like you have your anti-heroes and your anti-villain. I Maybe? guess anti anti villain, yeah, sympathetic villains. I mean, yeah, that that's a thing you don't see too often in old school games. Uh, every once in a while, I, I think Dragon Quest IV had a very sympathetic villain, but uh, in the newer RPGs, you see it all the time, and it really sort of became popularized with Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm starting to notice that it's just th- this is going for years and years upon people. I, I, me only hearing about how amazingly crazy and psychotic <laughs> Sephiroth is. So I had this image of him very built up in my head, and so far I'm really being let down. <laughs> Maybe you should play Dissidia. He's a little more of a badass than that. Uh, um, I, I, I actually have Dissidia, but I mostly oh, mostly been playing as a uh, Terra and Kefka, my two favorite characters. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um. Well, they're working on a sequel to Dissidia. I talked about that on last week's show. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think the only seven character they add is Tifa, though. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, I barely use her, actually. I'm more, of a, I'm more of a Red 13 kind of guy. Red, Red 13 sucks. I don't know. He's doing all right in my party. Yeah, I don't know. He's annoying. I, I, I usually uh, y- y- keep uh, Yuffie in the group, and then the third one is whoever I need for the story. You know, yeah. So, uh, you know, I like I like somebody who can attack from the back row, you know. Just wait for the comments uh, down below. There's going to be like here's here's my party and here's my party. Oh, well, I don't mind that. It, it, yeah. Everybody everybody has their own thing. I think we could all agree that that uh 
Kate Sith sucks. I haven't gotten him yet, but He's such a annoying piece of but crap. I'm interested in knowing how do you like how is he utilized? He carries him like does he throw his megaphone at people? He shouts at people and damages them. Dude, this is an, a Japanese RPG. <laughs> what do you expect here? Uh, I think I might be mildly entertained for you a bit. Cro- have you ever played Chrono Cross? There's actually a couple of characters in that who literally use music as their weapon. Well, um, oh, what about uh, what's yeah. his face from Final Fantasy IV? The the bar Edward. 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 Yes. Yeah, Edward. he threw music notes at you. <laughs> yeah, but he was supposed to be a ninny. Oh God, was he? He was supposed to be a ninny. I, like in Chrono Cross, one of the first characters you can get if you play the right path to get him is this guy, Nicky, hmm. who, um, he's a rock star. Um, his, he's like the emo, lo- weapon, emo looking dude. Uh, well, that was kind of before. Like, emo. like, like before emo, but he kind of had that. He, he looks like he, he would fit in with Avenged Sevenfold, maybe. I don't know about emo, but, uh, um, uh, but yeah, he, I know. he plays all of his all of his attacks are power chords. It's great. Hmm, that'd be interesting. It, it's hilarious. I, it's I hilarious. only played briefly into Chrono Cross. I wasn't very interested in the battle system or anything. But but oh. keep in mind, this is before um, I, I had better see. better eyes and every and I noticed the print is really small. Well, some games uh, recently have had very very small, like Final Fantasy thirteen. It's so small, you pretty much have to have this huge HD screen to really see it. And I had to sit very close to the TV to play Final Fantasy XIII because of how small the text was. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. That, that is one reason why I never bothered to even think about playing Final Fantasy XIII was I couldn't read it. Now you could, though. Now I can, but I, you know, I hear a lot of negativity towards it and i don't mean well, you, i, I you, you you hang around the screw attack forums i remember you were telling me about <laughs> how you always hear negative things about final fantasy 13 and i said let me guess you posted screw attack don't you i don't i don't have posted such, screw attack have, i just happen well, to read yeah they have such a hard on for that game it's ridiculous <laughs> most everybody that i know actually likes it quite a lot they're not going to say it's the best and and you have you like have a, a lot. gone on length about Telling me about it, and I am interested. The only thing is, see, I don't like people. You know, kind of complain that it's linear in the beginning. I don't really mind that it's linear. I played through Final Fantasy X. No, it, it, it is linear for the most part. Um, there's a there's a chapter where it opens up, and there's an overworld, and you can do some exploring if you choose, and some side quests and stuff. But it, it's very much influenced by other genres like uh, there's parts that are very much like a first person shooter type of game not that you're shooting in a first person view but you could see the influence in the level design hmm. so it's it, it, it very much does borrow from other genres it's uh, very much it is linear but yeah if you don't mind that I would definitely just give it a shot <laughs> now you've also uh, I want to talk about this you've also been playing Oblivion yes I have but unfortunately it has been put on the wayside a little bit but I did get a fair way through it now you're uh, you're a new entry into the Elder Scrolls fandom I pretty much browbeat you into getting Oblivion yes and uh, and, and I found a copy you haven't looked back yeah I found a the game of the year edition for like 40 bucks and <laughs> It pretty much took my life over for a good week or so. It, it tends to do that. Now, you're playing on PlayStation 3, yes. correct? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, uh, are you looking forward to Skyrim? I am now. Beforehand, I, I, I never really you know, gave two thoughts wow. about the Elder Scrolls well, series. Yeah. Well, it was only just announced fairly recently, and I did want to talk about it a bit. Um, hmm. Some of the issues with Oblivion that a lot of people had were the way that your character sort of is the center of the world. Everybody stops and stares at you. <laughs> yes. And then you co- and they're always willing to drop whatever they're doing to talk to you and then it zooms in on their face and it's like extreme close up. And uh, you know, they say in Skyrim you walk into a town and pretty much people go about their business and sometimes they want to talk to you, sometimes they don't want to talk to you. And they're just going to go about their business as they're talking to you. So kind of I think it's going to add a lot more realism and immersion so it's not like oblivion where you saunter into the imperial city and everybody's like look look at him there he is <laughs> so, uh, he's going over there now uh, uh. 
I don't like where that voice is going. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Rusty. Uh, I was in the shower and it burned up my cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll have to explain that one to you later. But, um, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the idea that uh, enemies can attack the cities. Um, really? Yeah, oh yeah. They, they're doing a lot. They have dragons, and they uh, the dragons can actually come and attack the cities. Now, that's one thing I was um, interested in uh, mentioning, was that apparently you're the last dragonborn... Yeah, the Dragonborns, and I read about this. Apparently, it's 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 a lineage, and um, they have the power to commune with dragons. And the Septim Dynasty, hmm. uh, they were Dragonborns. So uh, Emperor Uriel Septim, who died in the beginning of Oblivion, that was yeah. Patrick Stewart's character. Unfortunately, he was, he was a Dragonborn. Um, but now that the Empire is in disarray, oh yeah, and you know. Like, we went over it uh, when we were talking about it. You know, Morrowind was taken over by the Argonians. Mm-hmm. The other elven nations retreated. Skyrim's in civil war. And uh, and, and this is 200 years after Oblivion. After Oblivion, yeah. yeah, 200 years later. So a lot has happened. A lot has happened. The events of uh, one of the books, a lot of the lore that we'll find out about. But um, the craziest thing is that it still follows a tradition. You still start off as a prisoner, and you have a mentor character who's one of the blades, so it sort of does the same thing that the first four games do. Hmm. But it, it's sort of very unique. There's no classes. Yeah, that's one thing. I don't mind that in Oblivion. I, like, I'm cool with that in Oblivion. But yeah. to not have it might be refreshing that there's no I class. Think, I think it's a great idea because it... it when you uh, the whole point of the classes is deciding which of your skills are going to contribute to your level and which aren't. But why wouldn't your level go up from you getting better at stuff? There's no way to uh, have the beginning of the game happen and you're going to decide in that like hour which skills you're going to be using for the rest of the game. Yeah, because uh, halfway through maybe you decide I like doing this. You know, I like uh, using magic a lot more than say thievery. Yeah. But then you'd still have to keep your thief skills up if you wanted to level up. Yes. You could do a complete switch. Now, the perk system does suggest that you would want to stick to something, mm. but it's not necessary. Um, a lot of it seems to be based on Fallout 3, which Bethesda worked on after Oblivion. And, and, uh, the, and the, the engine of Oblivion seemed uh, heavily based, or Fallout 3. or Fallout, yeah. You know, one, Fallout, one based on the other. Yeah, Fallout Three was yeah. That, it's the Gamebryo engine, and it's, I'm glad they're not using it because that was the mm-hmm. same engine that Morrowind used. Yeah, and now now and they're com- really going completely going different, and they're even streamlining the uh, the skills even more. And they yeah, have- I think that I think they've eliminated weapon skills. I think it's just one handed weapon, two handed weapon, and marksman. So I think you're not going to have like blade and blunt and all that stuff. Um. I'm not sure about that, but from Gleaming, because they have added a few skills. Mm-hmm, but but in, but in the end, there are fewer things that you have are, to that you play around with. I think 17 skills in this. As I think it's to. Uh, I, don't know, I, I read 18, but it it's, it's all it's all speculation. Yeah, there's there were there were 21 in Oblivion, there were yeah. 27 in Morrowind, and there were over 40 in Daggerfall. <laughs> so you know. And, and let me Not guess, really. did, did, did you max out everything on Daggerfall? Oh, no, no. No? D- D- Daggerfall is a game that you could play for decades. You, <laughs> you, have, to, you have to pick and choose what you do in that game. You can't, you can't do it all, especially that it has eight different endings. Oh, really? So, yeah. And, and, that's kind of, and that game is kind of old, too, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think uh, 96 or 97 it came out. Wow. Um, Daggerfall, yeah, the endings was because the whole thing was about um, these different factions and you basically decide who's going to be in power and, you know, it all depends on who's dead and who's alive and who gets the Numidium and, you know. But um, another thing about Skyrim is that all four of um, the previous Elder Scrolls games, of course, talking about Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, Mm -hmm. were parts of a prophecy that leads to Skyrim. 
So yeah, the past four games, it's all leading to this. Yeah, it all sort of accumulates. You know, they, they, the events in the Elder Scroll said the Dragon God is going to return after these events pass, and it was like the shattering of the Scepter in the first game, the return of Numidium in the second game, the Red Mountain exploding in the third one, and, and mm-hmm. in Oblivion, it would be the Oblivion of crisis. Course. And then the final thing being Skyrim going into Civil War. Which it current at at that at that point when you start playing it currently, I, hits, I believe right? so. I believe so. Now we haven't yet seen the game in action, but I have the Game Informer magazine, which has a nice fourteen-page spread on the game. Ooh, lots of screenshots. Very excited about that. But uh, this isn't coming out f- till November. Yes, yeah, lest we forget November, November 11th. eleventh. November eleventh, twenty eleven. So we got eleven, eleven, eleven. Hope it doesn't get like push back or anything because that's you know something you don't get too often mm-hmm. but, <laughs> now we have to wait for 12 12 12 oh my god <laughs> we don't want that to happen do we no but uh it would definitely suck. be in the uh, area of uh, christmas release in that sense oh definitely yeah, well november is pretty much the christmas release yeah christmas. like uh mid mid to late november or yes mid to late november that's when all the big ones yeah. come out yeah yeah but okay, yeah, like I said, that, that's far off, that's November. I want to hear, what else are you looking forward to? Now you can see, you got the PlayStation 3, it's a whole new world open to you. What games that are coming out are you excited to play? For the PlayStation 3? For any system. Well, one thing I'm looking forward to is the 3DS. Oh yeah. We talked about that a lot last week. Mm-hmm, I know. And, uh, I know, I, I know there were a few things that I listed that got you all excited, and you said that there were a few things you didn't know about until I listed them. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, what were those things that got you excited? What games in specifically are you looking forward to? Well, I'm kind of a sucker for um, re-releases, so I'm looking forward to Ocarina of Time in 3D. Okay. Because, honestly, I haven't picked it up again because there's a lot other uh, console games that I, could, that I rather would play, yeah. but now I can have it on the go. Exactly. And in 3D, now that I can actually freaking see in 3D. So, Ocarina of Time, uh, there's other re-releases out there like Star Fox 64. A lot of Nintendo 64 games headed towards the 3DS and yeah. 3D. Uh, what do you think of Kid Icarus Uprising? Um, I'll, uh, I'll probably hold out on that one. Just cause, well, that's, uh, the, that's the big launch title. Yeah, that is like, it, it is like the launch title, but... Yeah. I didn't like the first Kid Icarus that much. I know, blasphemy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really like the Game Boy game. I liked it even less, actually. The Game Boy one was great. I just didn't like it. Mind you, I haven't played it since yeah. it was released. But this is this is a completely different play style. Yeah, this oh yeah, they, they've gone like 360, but or 180, I should say. And uh, so, I don't know, my vision of uh, Pit and Kid Icarus and all that has been kind of skewed. Also, I when I would play people in Brawl and they would play as Pit, they would just use that one move over and over and over and over. They would so just... you gotta use you got to use Meta Knight then and just give them a taste of their own medicine. Uh, I'm more of a Lucas kind of guy. Oh, Luke, no, he sucks. Yeah, that's what everybody says, but I'm a sucker for Mother. <laughs> <laughs> just like Sephiroth, right? Yes! Excellent oh. segue! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> that was bad. I apologize for that. No, 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 no. That was good. For all the for all the people out there who love their mothers but don't necessarily love their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is I hope everybody. Yes. Or maybe I hope. Or maybe uh people who love others mothers. Oh, that's me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about your mom. Yo mama. Yo mama. As I wrote a Yo Mama joke, I tested it out on you, but I haven't got to tell it on the channel, so here will be uh, a chance to do that, Jesse. Yes. Yo Mama's armpits is so smelly, every time she goes to the supermarket, they throw out all the cheese. Hey, don't talk about my mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just turned like you were from Jersey for a second there. How so? Hey. Hey. Or either that or you're the, the Fonz. Hey. Are you the Fonz? In school, I only got A. Hey. Oh. We're going to strike that one from the record. Oh. That was terrible. 
But anyway, uh, I chime in with I chime in with my one joke. Yeah, (laughs) and it was a bad one. One last thing I wanted to talk about: uh, what were some of your favorite games in 2010? Um, Well, uh, one of the big highlights was uh, Mario Galaxy Two. Of course, I gotta say a a pox on Mega Gray for not having played it. Really. Don't you remember when we were in the chat room? He said he hasn't played Mario Galaxy one or two. Oh yes, and um, and we started talking about like our favorite tracks, like uh, what is it, yeah. Gusty, Gusty, uh, Gusty Garden, Gusty Galaxy. Garden Galaxy, the yeah. the Triple G man, <laughs> G man, the Triple G, G money, um, and you mentioned uh, Big Egg, I think. A uh, good egg galaxy. Good egg, good egg galaxy. From there. from the first one. Yeah. Just uh, it was like the theme of the first game, so you know I couldn't get it out of my head. Well, it's weird because Gusty Garden had kind of become the theme of like the series in general. Yeah, of all of Galaxy One and Two. Which is, hey, I hope they make a third one. That would be great. Well, the second one even outsold the first one, so you know it's only it only makes sense yeah. to keep going. You know how Nintendo is, though. And Metroid yeah. Prime Three wound up on a different system. You know. Hmm. What else, other than uh, Mario Galaxy 2, did you really enjoy in 2010? Um, I'm just looking... Because we, we're looking back on a truly great year in gaming. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm trying to look at the list of games that I have. You know, Heavy Rain got a lot of flack, but I liked it for what it was. Okay. Like, uh, it was a different kind of experience. It wasn't, you know, go jump, go jump on the bad guys and then save the princess. It was immersing yourself in a story like granted it wasn't very you know video gamey but it did have a sense of you know you have to interact in order for things to happen it was like uh, uh, it was it was kind of like the um what are those called the quick time events like a big oh well now you're not selling it <laughs> i like yeah. i like quick time events though oh real yeah no but you're you're making me think of like uh those old fmv games like no 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 no, no. oh my God. <laughs> like on the sega cd Oh man, like uh, Night Trap or Time Gal. Time Gal yeah, or uh, uh, Dragon's Lair. Well, that goes back even further, and I couldn't stand those stupid Dragon's Lair games. I just liked the animation, so I just I would just sit in the arcade and watch people. That's definitely a game that's more fun to watch than it is to actually play. Mm-hmm. Uh, one last question: Were there any games that came out in the last year that really disappointed you? Other M. Frickin' Metroid Other oh, M. Oh, that's right. Oh, my oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, of course, then you have the likes of Mega Gray. It was a masterpiece. Uh, if, if you like piles of shit. <laughs> oh. I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, it wasn't the a completely the frick, awful, the, the, terrible game. The story but... just brought it down so much. Yeah. It killed the pacing. Like, it killed... I just wanted to shut up. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ne- what do you think of Samus appearing in the Dead or Alive game? What? Uh, you, I, I talked about that in the last week's show. Gotta confess, uh, haven't listened to it yet. Team Ninja, who worked on Other M, <laughs> they were advertising that their new Dead or Alive game, which is coming to 3DS, um, has a, a an arena that's themed on Metroid Other M, and they show it. And, you know, and the Ridley's flying around, and it looks pretty cool. But then at the other video, you actually see Samus. And, you know, my question, of course, that I was raising in last week's show is, I don't care about Dead or Alive. It's not a system that I ever got into. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't like that series at all. But Samus being in there, you have to wonder, will she have the jiggly boobs? Hmm. Well, I, well what, I mean, like that... That's what it's known for. Isn't that the first thing they work on, is the boob physics? I, that's the the point. Yeah. They, they, they advertise it as, as breast juggling technology. <laughs> breast juggling technology? Yeah, uh, <laughs> jiggling all around. And, uh, un- and undulating, you might say? Oh, yeah, but it doesn't look realistic. It's like they just jump and the things flop around like, it's a little crazy. <laughs> it's not realistic at all, so I don't know why people think that's sexy, but. People but but Samus, like, is, is she in, like, the Zero Suit? Is that what it's going to be? Or is she just. Full on scantily clad. I would assume that she would be in the zero suit because it would be kind of unfair to all these other ladies if she comes in with the power suit and oh, nobody could. That'd be awesome, <laughs> you know. And then she starts shooting everybody. Why not, right? Or um, maybe they'll go. Maybe they'll go a little classy and go for the super Metroid tankini look. Oh, oh god! 
Oh, the tanky. <laughs> oh, the 90s. Oh, yes. But, you know, yeah, I got to agree with you. Other M was disappointing. The other game that I was disappointed by personally was Rock Band 3. Oh, yeah, we all remember your uh, very insightful YouTube video. Not so many people thought it was insightful. I got a lot of the fans that were pissed off about that video. No, but, you know, I, I can see, you know, your the points behind it. There are a lot of yeah. songs that were already on other games. and uh, It was short. It was mm-hmm. easy. You know. So, I, I don't know. Compared to Rock Band 2, it was a juke. A juke. A juke. So, always great having you on the show. Of course. Jesse. Uh, we'll probably see you sometime in Season 4. Here's hoping. Fingers crossed. Assuming the world doesn't end, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you gotta wait. You gotta wait about another year and so many months. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, uh, twenty twelve. Yeah, you know, I was talking about all this global warming. We got like uh, we got about three feet of global warming outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it weren't for global warming, it would be like <laughs> minus thirty out all the time. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. So we should be thankful then. We should be I'm so go thankful. There. I'm gonna go out there with some hairspray and easy cheese and just spray it everywhere. I don't like where that sentence is going either. <laughs> the easy cheese. <laughs> wow. That's the only thing it's good. You for should me. make a video of you doing nothing but eating uh, crackers and easy cheese. I would not put that in my body if you ate me. I may be a big fat guy, but there's certain things that I don't eat, and Easy Cheese is one of them. I have never been privy to even seeing Easy Cheese eaten live. I, I, I ate it once as a kid. It literally tastes like cardboard. And I've tasted cardboard before, so I think I get it. Okay, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to sign you off. We'll get back to the show, play a little music. All right. And uh, th- thank go. you for having me on. It was, it's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh man, always so much stuff to talk about and so little time to talk about it. Um, well, I got some news and uh, a couple of things to talk about before we end the show, so let's get into that. Um, once again, thanks to Jesse for coming by. Um, talked about Skyrim already. I wanted to talk about this. is an interesting story related to Dead Space 2, and I did talk about Dead Space 2 a little bit um, <clears throat> last episode. I want to say last week, but it wasn't. So, um, <laughs> Dead Space 2, interesting thing to talk about. We talked about the ad campaign. This is just an interesting little sort of, I guess, a human interest story, you'd call it. Uh, there was a Twitter user. I don't have her username, but her name is Ashley. And she's a big fan of Dead Space. And, um, <laughs> and <laughs> what happened was, uh, I guess what happened was that, um, she was concerned about the sequel. She heard that it was going to be toned down in terms of, I guess, the violence and the horror. And um, she said this on Twitter, um, directing at the Dead Space art director Ian Milham, who responded to her saying that the sequel will be just as awesome. So she said, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot, but, you know, I'll give you a hard time if it doesn't deliver. So she gets the game, she loves it, but then her dog fucks up by knocking over her Xbox while it's playing, and you know, if you have uh, most models of the Xbox, that'll fuck up a disc real fast. 
Uh, too bad she didn't know about many places that you could take it to and get it fixed really easily and really cheaply, but she did something better. She lamented about her ruined Dead Space 2 disc on Twitter. The, uh, uh, the same guy, Ian Milham, the art director, got in touch with her, sent her a new copy of the game autographed by the entire development staff. So how cool is that? Um, wow. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Your dog ate your dead space. Well, didn't eat it, but, you know, he he uh, he broke it by knocking over the Xbox. So that, uh, I hope the Xbox was okay, because I'm sure they didn't send her a new Xbox. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was, real quick, I wanted to go over, uh, you know what? Ne- you know what? I'll save that for next week, actually. I wanted to talk about Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Mortal Kombat and uh, the the lineups that are in there, the, uh, you know, what what characters are in it. But I want to have time to really talk about that more in depth, so I'll save that for next episode. Um, I promised that I'd talk about the, uh, the, the reason that I'm not too happy about the release date of Dragon Quest VI, which I believe the American title is going to be Realms of Revelation, or Realm of Revelation, let me look at it real quick. It's, yeah... Uh, Dragon Quest VI Realms of Revelation. Here is the reason that it bugs me. I was looking at February release date. February 14th, okay? The 14th, which is, I believe, a Monday, so that's kind of weird. But um, Dragon Quest VI is going to be published by Nintendo, actually. So, um, in America, at least. So that, you know, Nintendo likes to publish big-name games on Mondays or Sundays rather than Tuesdays. So I guess it uh, cuts out the competition. Check this out, though. February 14th, Dragon Quest VI, Realms of Revelation. I'm a huge Dragon Quest fan. That's a must-have for me. Next day, February 15th, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds for Xbox 360. Another must-have for me. Also on February 15th, for the PSP Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together. So three games that I consider, for me... To have must haves for me within a span of two days on three different systems, no less. That is going to be interesting. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, one of them, one or two of them might have to wait, but man, oh man, Dragon Quest VI, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and Tactics Ogre all at once. You know, that's just insane for me. Part of me wants to say, well, you know, you're going to you're gonna spend, you know, hundreds of hours playing Tactics Ogre. You might as well just wait on that one. But then it might not, it might have, it might be a little print run for all I know. It might be hard to find later. At least with the other two games, I know I'll be able to find them later. So it's it's just, oh my god, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this. But yeah, that's, that's kind of why I'm none too happy about the timing of the... Um, Dragon Quest VI, because I was already lamenting the fact that uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Tactics Ogre came out on the same day, and then I realized Dragon Quest VI came out the day before, so, you know, really, piss on that, man. Piss on that. Um, this is an interesting story. There's a there's a television out there that, you know, if you're thinking of... Where is it? Oh, my God, I can't find it. One second here. There we go. I accidentally had closed the tab. Uh, thank fuck for Mozilla Firefox having that thing where you can bring up tabs that you closed with the flick of a wrist. If you're lo- if you're in the uh, market for a you know a smallish HD TV to play video games on, maybe you you know you don't have room for like a really big TV, and you're looking for a, a nice kind of smallish flat screen with HD. Check this out: the Sony Bravia. Uh, HD TV. It's, it's a new one. It's the KDL 22PX 300 model. It's uh, very interesting. It's a 22-inch 720p friendly uh, uh, HD TV with four HDMI ports, two USB ports, a digital TV tuner, an Ethernet port, VGA inputs, and check this out: a built-in PlayStation 2. The base of it, you know how they have those flat bases, is a PS2. How awesome is that? I mean, you're getting a, a sort of a, what really is now a classic console built into a new television. And I think that's really cool for people who have, like, you know, PS3, and they have the models that don't play PS2 games, and maybe they miss playing their PS2 games, and maybe they're looking for a new digital TV, so wow. How cool is that? And of course, since it's a PlayStation 2, it's also a DVD player. Um, $315. 
really good deal, I think, for a 22-inch flat screen 720p with built-in PlayStation 2, which is also a DVD player and a CD player, come to think of it. I mean, uh, you know, considering that Sony is a huge maker of uh, televisions, how long is it before you see built-in PlayStation 3s? You know, that could be that could be the next big thing, built-in consoles. I always thought, you know, Nintendo um, created the 3DS, a glasses or goggles-free 3D experience. There's 3D televisions out there. Imagine if Nintendo expanded into the realm of television and they created built-in 3D that you don't need glasses for on a television and then imagine if the next console like the successor to the Wii was a 3D thing and that could come in built in so that could be a really cool thing uh, speaking of the Wii I wanted to talk about Conduit uh, the Conduit was of course a big first person shooter for the um, for the Wii there's a sequel coming out has a new release date that's coming out April 19th and uh, that's the Conduit 2 also there's going to be a Conduit game for the 3DS I don't know if it's like a port of the Wii game or if it's a side story or what, but they are working on a Conduit game for the 3DS. Speaking of April 19th, that's another crowded date because April 19th not only has the release of the Conduit 2 for the Wii, but it also has the release of another exciting game, Final Fantasy IV Complete Collection, which is coming to PlayStation Portable. And uh, this is a you know an HD redo of Final Fantasy IV. Um, not like the 3D one on the DS, but more like Final Fantasy 1 and 2 on the PSP. But check this out. It contains the sequel, Final Fantasy 4, the After Years Return of the Moon, which had previously been exclusive to the Wii's download service, WiiWare. And it has a new chapter that bridges the gap between Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 4, the After Years. So, wow. April 19th, Conduit 2. Okay, this is another crap. This is three games all at once. Conduit 2 on April 19th for the Wii. Final Fantasy 4 Complete Collection on April 19th, and that's for the PSP. Mortal Kombat is also coming out on the 19th. You guys are killing me! You're killing me! Those are three. I guess I'll wait on Conduit, but you're killing me! Those are all great titles, all coming out on the same fucking day, you guys. Oh, my God. 2010 was great because there was like one or maybe two, but usually one major release every month. And this, it's like several major releases that I want all clustered together in February, and then you guys are fucking repeating it for April. Gaming industry, you are killing me. You're killing me. But, uh, yeah, that's that's what's going on with that. Uh, let's see. Yoshiniro, uh, Yoshinori Ono from Capcom uh, said a few interesting things. I want to make this quick. He wants to bring back the Onimusha series, and he also wants to bring back the Darkstalker series. Capcom has been kind of reluctant to bring back the Darkstalker series, regardless of the fact that there is consumer interest. So, if you're a fighting game fan like me, if you're a Darkstalkers fan, you want to see a new Darkstalkers game, which there hasn't been one since Vampire Savior way back on the PlayStation 1, you might want to tell Capcom about it. Um, Nintendo's working... On, they, they made this big announcement. They're working on a Mario game for the 3DS. You know, duh. Yeah, dar, dar, dar. No news yet as to whether it's a 3D game or if it's going to be a side-scroller or what. Um, and finally, let's see. Uh, wanted to talk about... Oh, one more thing, actually. I wanted to mention that Halo, the original Halo, is getting a remake, I assume, for Xbox 360. I'm not that interested in Halo, but uh, for those of you that are, that's out there. So, that's what's going on. They're looking at November 15th as a release date for that. So, there you go. So, let's talk about uh, sales figures for this week, this past week in Japan. And then that's going to be it. So, here's what's going in. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Here's what's going on in Japan. Um, now, this is uh, actually two... It, it's a... The sales figures from January 10th to January 16th, there is a bit of a delay, but these are the latest sales figures coming out of Japan. Uh, so here are the top 20 selling games in Japan, so uh, you kind of know what's hot there, which sometimes translates to what's going to be hot here soon. Number one selling game, finally uh, knocking Monster Hunter Freedom 3 down. How do you knock down a really popular PSP game with another really popular PSP game? Another Century's Episode Portable by Bandai Namco for the PlayStation 3. 
which um, what is up with these sales figures? That's a little weird there. Um, it says 0, 1.1. Oh, that's the release date. Okay, I'm sorry. And that sold about 70,000 copies. And number two, Monster Hunter Freedom 3 by Capcom for PlayStation 3 sold about 68,000 units. So it was close. That sold a, a total of 4 million copies to date. Well, over 4 million. And number three, Donkey Kong Country Returns by Nintendo for the Wii sold 29,000 uh, copies. I'm rounding here, by the way, for a copy, uh, a, a, a total of about a, three quarters of a million, almost three quarters of a million. And number four is Nino Kuni by Level 5 for the DS. That sold 19,000 copies for a total of 438,000. And number five, AKB1 slash 48 If I Loved an Idol. I don't think that one's coming to America. Let's buy Bandai Namco for the PSP. Told you. I, you know, I, I, I predicted this in Season 1. I said the PSP is going to see kind of a revolution of popularity after languishing for so long, and you're seeing this happening now. That moved uh, about 18,600 copies for a total of 339,000. And number six, Arcana Heart 3 for the PlayStation 3 by Arc System Works moved about 17,000 copies. Number seven, Wii Party by Nintendo for the Wii moved just a shade under 16,000 copies for a total of 1.7 million so far. Number eight, Pokemon Black and White Edition by the Pokemon team for the DS sold 15,500 for a total of just a shade over 5 million copies sold so far. Um, I think that's the highest selling game on this list is Pokemon Black and White, so there you have that. Uh, number nine, Gundam Musou 3 by Bandai Namco for PlayStation 3 sold 300... And th oh, I'm sorry, it sold 12,000... 800 copies, and uh, it's about 331,000 to date. Number 10, Mario Sports Mix. Mix? What's wrong with me today? Mario Sports Mix by Nintendo for the Wii. Uh, 12,000. You know what it is? I'm looking forward to the Super Bowl, and I'm a little antsy about that. Go Steelers. Mario Sports Mix sold 12,000 copies for a total of just over half a million. Number 11, the third birthday. That's the big name sequel to uh, Parasite Eve 1 and 2, which were made back on PlayStation 1. Sold 10,500 copies for a total of 223,000 so far. Number 12, Magician's Quest, The Merchant's Story of Sorcery by Konami for the DS. Sold 10,000 copies for a total of 307,000 so far. And number 13, the remake of Saga 3 called Saga 3 Shadow or Light by Square Enix for the DS. That sold 37, I'm sorry, it sold 9,700 9, copies for a total of 37,000 so far. Number 14, Wii Fit Plus by Nintendo for the Wii sold 9,000 copies for a total of about 2.2 million. Number 15, Mass Effect 2 for the uh, Xbox 360 by Microsoft sold about 8,000, closer to 9,000 actually, closer to 9,000 copies. That's debuting on the Japanese charts. I'm sure that one will be big, uh, bigger here in America. Number 16, Mario Kart Wii, still hanging in there by Nintendo for the Wii, with 8,500 copies sold for a total of about 3.1 million. And number 17, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, also hanging in there by Nintendo for the Wii, sold 8,000 copies for a total of 4.2 million. And think about how old these games are, especially Mario Kart Wii, and how Pokemon Black and White has already outstripped both of them. Uh, number 18, Wii Sports Resort with the Wiimote Plus. Sold 8,000 copies for a total of a quarter million so far. Number 19, World Soccer Winning 11 2011 by Konami for the PSP. Sold 7.7 thousand for a total of 138.8 thousand so far. And finally, number 20, Call of Duty Black Ops dubbed version. Published by Square Enix, believe it or not, for the PlayStation 3. For uh, 7,500 for a total of 65,000 copies sold. That's another one that's much more popular here in America. And finally, we're going to end the show with the hardware. Um, PlayStation 3, the number one selling console in Japan uh, for that week. We, um, and that one's down quite a lot. Sales actually dropped drastically on the PlayStation 3, but it's still hanging in there at number one. Number two, uh, this one went up a little bit, the PlayStation Portable. At number three, the Wii selling about half as many consoles as they did last week. Um, number four, the DSi LL with a huge drop, with about a third as many con. Uh, no, yeah, about a third as many consoles, a little more than a third. Uh, the DSi at number five, with about half as many consoles, that's a big drop. The Xbox 360, yeah, it's a little bit of a drop. Um, number seven, the DS Lite, and that's a major drop. PS2 also suffered a drop, and the PSP Go hanging in there with a really like a major, major drop. So basically. 
across the board, hardware sales uh, dropped majorly in that week in Japan, with the only console seeing a slight boost being the PlayStation Portable. Well, I told you. I told you guys about the PSP. It was so easy to make fun of it for so long. Well, that's going to be it for uh, this week's show. We'll join me next week, and uh, we'll see what's up. I'll talk about Mortal Kombat in more detail. I'll talk about Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and uh, maybe we'll have another guest. We'll see what's up. Leave me your questions and comments in the video. PM them to me. Email them to me. However you want to get it to me. I want to hear your questions and comments. I will answer in the next show. So VMX out.